Hi there. Are you a wedding photographer that would like to add film photography to your services? Well, you've come to the right video. Today, we're in Shinjuku and we're going for a walk to some used camera shops with Japan Camera Hunter. And while there are some very expensive options, there are also some less expensive options, and those are kind of the ones we're gonna focus on. One of the other things we're going to focus on is uh, physical size of cameras as well. We're going to talk about SLRs, we're gonna talk about point-and-shoot cameras, and also rangefinders. I prefer the smallest kit possible, so uh, that's what I'm going to focus on, as well as not spending a whole lot of money, because at the end of the day, the film that you're loading into the camera becomes a sensor, so there's no reason to spend a ton of money on a camera unless you really want to look cool on the internet. But the film selection overall and the, how you're exposing it is going to be more important than the actual the physical thing that you're using most of the time. Now, let us go see some used film cameras here in Shinjuku. It's usually very quiet in Japan. We picked the loudest street. 40 years, I don't know. It's been here longer than I've been here. I've been here 20 years. It's one of the old school ones. It's just rammed in there, jam-packed. Might not be able to film in there because it's too small, but we can always ask. But really nice guys in there, and they're probably going to be like, what, you again? This guy. <laughs> yeah, this guy. Every Monday. Yeah, it's every Wednesday he's here, or Monday. Or... Let's go down to Chuko Camera Box. Oh, he's not open for another five minutes. Five minutes. We'll come back. Okay. Yeah, we'll come back. Today, joined by Japan Camera Hunter. And uh, we're going to find some cameras for wedding photography. Some yeah. film photography cameras. Yeah. Who, who are you? Um, oh, how yes. did you end up here? Um, I'm Japan Camera Hunter, uh, Bellamy, Bellamy Hunt. I've uh, been here for 20 years now. 12 so years doing Japan Camera Hunter. And basically, the, it's in the name. In here in Japan, I find cameras for people I sell mostly film and classic cameras to a lot of wedding photographers too, funnily enough. Yeah. yeah, so I spend my time going around, showing people around these cool stores and uh, selling people cameras. So pr pretend that I am a wedding photographer. I've never shot a film camera. Right. What, well, what, what <laughs> camera comes to your mind um, right okay. now? Right now, if you've never shot a film camera before, I would not probably suggest a Hasselblad or something like that. I'd say get yourself an SLR, a Nikon, like a, an F5 or an F3. And that will be, and it was back in the day, a very, very good wedding photographer's camera. I used to know a lot of wedding photographers just shoot the F100 and the F5. Inexpensive, you can use your modern auto Nikon focus. lenses. Autofocus, you've got all of that. Or if you want, you've got your main camera, you've got your digital thing, you want to get some more surreptitious shots, get yourself a point and shoot, an Olympus Mu or uh, Ricoh GR, Contax T2, there's, there's a whole raft, it just depends on your budget. I can help you find the one that suits your budget. Link in the description below. <laughs> We're going to go to location number one, which will be Chuko Camera Box, um, which is just around the corner. He should hopefully be open by now. Don't mind the nails. <laughs> and we'll go and have a look. <laughs> my daughter last night, <laughs> last night, painted my nails and I thought it was just paint. Oh no, no, it was full on nail enamel. Before I came here, I'm like, with like acetone, <laughs> just trying to get this stuff off. All right, first location. First location, Chuko Camera Box. This is in Shinjuku on the west side. Um, it's near the Odubashi Camera, which is just around the corner, which is where you're gonna find pretty much most of the camera shops now, uh, based in west Shinjuku. Let's go and have a look. So that would be a good start. Like, uh, you know, an XA2 um, as a, if you've not shot film before at all, you know, get one of these. It does the thinking for you. It's very, very simple be a good uh, way to have a backup and it fits in the pocket. These things weigh like 200 grams or something, less than a burger. I've never even seen one. Or um, OM1, you know, very classic, very simple SLR camera, just perfect for somebody who's just trying it out. Yeah, so the flash is additional and uh, it screws onto the side and you can take it off. That tiny little thing there is a rangefinder, but the XA is a totally pure little camera. It's got a rangefinder and it's brilliant. And they're cheap too. The Canon at this generation was making some really wild cameras and they were experimenting really hard, but they weren't quite for the market, you know. They were more, so the F1 and the AE1, those were the popular cameras. These ones kind of, fell by the wayside and the Canon's got this huge spider's web of cameras that they've released and they're all just evolutionary dead ends, you know, but they made them anyway, which is 
really cool, but if you're into collecting Canon, it's a nightmare. <laughs> it's just never ending. Used camera market, used camera store, used camera, yeah. Second floor is just up a flight of stairs, but again, it's another one of these. Been here forever, lots of really esoteric stuff, some really interesting stuff in there as well. Let's check it out. I've got down here like uh, Switars and stuff like these, you know, really unusual, rare lenses. But these are the Konica Gemba Kantokus. These are the workplace cameras, um, workman's cameras, builder's cameras, whatever you want to call it. They had a zoom version, um, they had a 28 and a 35. They don't have any of the 35s here, but they do have a couple of the 28s. And you can see they made them in rugged looking shell, which is, you know, waterproof. Yeah, they are very, very cool. I uh, have them as my backup. I've got like three of them as backup cameras. What is the, what is the lens? Like? 28. And they're all... 2.8 or something? Uh, 2.8, yeah, I think. Have to have a look, I can't remember, maybe a 3.5. Really, really sharp, because it had to be, because it was for site foreman. They had to make a record of the building site, so it had to be a good quality lens. This is a sleeper, this camera, big time. Midori or blue? So, <laughs> so <laughs> Look at that. It is really cool, and that's in way better condition than my one. Oh yeah, they, they do, they do. Real simple. Real simple. That's it. There's auto mode, there's a timer, that's pretty much it. You switch the flash on, you switch the flash off, and. Simple. Um, Russian, Mamias, uh, Olympus, the entire Pen S, Pen ES, Pen S, Pen S. Used to be, it all used to be just be huge fridges as as much as far as you could see right and and now you look at it and go oh. and another thing that changed was uh, all of the boxes as well um, it used to be that the film was on the shelves but now it's all in just empty boxes because people were thieving once the prices got high enough people started stealing so I sell my film to Yodabashi camera and they they actually requested we need empty boxes please for our shelves. You know. okay. We should buy it so they know they stock more. Yeah, that's the old box as well. Yeah. They, you know, um, I wanted them to have the new box. Well, I say new, it's like two years old now. But, <laughs> but yeah, prices of film have gone up. Japan is a, in a bit of an unusual state because the yen has gone just tanked. So, you know, all of the film has been produced overseas, it has to come back into Japan. So the exchange rate has made it so that the film is way more expensive here than pretty much anywhere else, you know, which isn't favorable for Japanese film photographers. I actually get my film sent from the US rather than buy it here because it's cheaper, which is a shame. While everywhere else in the world is just going, oh yeah, film's back, let's do something. And Japan is just going, yeah, 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 yeah. good. We're buying uh, some film uh, that you may have heard of. It's also on, on someone's house. Uh, <laughs> My film. <laughs> In this building, if you look up there, the yellow sign, th third floor, lemon camera, All right? Um, they've got another one of these in Ginza. Um, this is their second store um, in Shinjuku and it's pretty good so we can go and have a look and filming is fine in here they don't mind they've got plenty of stock of my one so a lot of the stuff in here will you know it will say whether it's consignment or not there's consignment and you know you can't negotiate on the price of anything in here but you, so you, because it's consignment it hasn't been checked that well so you need to be really careful yeah and there's no they don't usually offer warranty in here or anything so if it breaks when you walk out Tough titties. Yeah, that's that's the Machina 67, that, and that's a 670, which means it's got a uh, multiple exposure okay. or double exposure on it. Um, they are fantastic rangefinders. Beautiful, beautiful lenses. They they feel solid. They they are fragile. They're like a fancy sports car. You've got to take care of them. You know. Back there though, that's the Contact 645, and that was yeah. the wedding photographer's that's camera. That's like if you search ever online. 
that's what comes up and I'm that's, like that is too big like I want something small yeah, that fits in my that, bag and they're very expensive that's yeah. you know six grand but that was the camera for those guys that is the um probably the uh, most collectible I guess of the T2s the T2 Platin um and it's got a platinum coating on the titanium has ostrich skin leather, comes in a mahogany box, and it has a synthetic ruby as the shutter button. And the price is really pretty eye-watering because um, it is still just a T2. <laughs> but if you really want to be bling, I mean. But the, the ruby shutter. Yeah, yeah, I mean, come on. Yeah, I'm gonna replace all my shutters. <laughs> synthetic rubies, yeah, okay. <laughs> Upstairs is the uh, used camera department, including film cameras. So we're gonna go and have a look up there. Fujiya, since 1938. It's a pretty long time. So lots of, I mean, there's a lot of like, GFX, you know, the, the digital stuff. Next to it, they've got roller flexes and they've got Mami RZs. And if you really wanna charge people a lot for wedding photography, get yourself one of them. <laughs> yeah, set them up. People would be into it. Oh yeah, they would. It's a whole process. I know people are offering tin types. The Leica R8, I'd say to anybody, that's a great, great, great SLR. It's underrated as heck. Um, it's an amazingly uh, accurate light meter in it. Yeah. What mount? That's an R mount, so it uses the Leica R mount lenses, which are a bit bigger, yeah. and they are brilliant for cinematography. So you can get them and mount them onto modern cameras, and they've just got this characteristic Leica look, prime lenses. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. This is what I'd say to anybody. I think if you want to get into a, a film photography and you don't want to spend a ton of money and you want to have a really good SLR experience, then you can go and get pretty much any one of these Nikons like F3, FM2, FE2, or um, FM, FE. They all fit the same lenses, the AI, AIS lenses, which are cheap everywhere they're ubiquitous you can find them everywhere there's just so many of them so you can get into it for not a whole lot of money and you've got access to this entire ecosystem which is great which can be used on your modern cameras as well so you're doing yourself a double service really there you go it is yeah i mean i could just hold on to that and drop it in an auction in like two years time or something, you know. Wait for something to do a video or... Yeah, right. So, it's a good knock for this. And that's the original Black Paint S2, holy... Wow. I'm worried about a thing today, I don't need... I, I, I'm not touching that. <laughs> I've already gone way overboard. <laughs> Full set 110. Mm. Spy camera Minox. I had the opportunity to buy one of those a few years ago for $3,000. $3, and I went, ah, I'll wait, I'll get another one some other time. So, what is it, an M6? It's an MOT, it's an M4, so it's a black M4. paint. Okay. Black paint, and the MOT is the motor drive version. So, you could attach a motor drive to it so you could have rapid fire yeah. shooting. When they came out, they were 20 grand. They only came out last year. That's a new camera, that's a brand new camera. Let's see, I mean, golf clubs, random golf clubs. Oh, old hickory ones. <laughs> yeah. You need some hickory? I don't. Hickory driver? Um, Do you have anything from your shirt? Can I buy something? <laughs> These are the GRs. This was from uh, Uniqlo. They don't have anything. Yeah, this, this is a Uniqlo edition. Yeah, no, 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 no. They've, no, they've got a whole range of t uh, camera t-shirts. Like, it's kind of wild. The horse and carriage. Yeah, the horse and carriage. That's, that's my camera, dude. That's me. That's beautiful. And those doors, they're barn doors. So when you flick the advance, it, they open like a barn door to let the horses out. <laughs> The premium place. This is Katsumido. As you can see, premium prices. They're not cheap, not at all. But they have some really good quality items. F3P, F2, F2 I level, R paint, repaint, repaint, repaints. Uh, I like the gray. That's yeah, repaint gray. Like a little, a little yeah. Different. 
Um, here's the Konica Genba Kantoga Zoom. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's the zoom lens version of the one you got, which is cool. very cool. Um, should we go inside? I don't think we're allowed to film inside though. They might be a bit fussy. There it is. If you're a wedding photographer and you're interested in buying a film camera, that's some information for you. There's no right or, there's some wrong decisions, but there's a lot of right decisions. So that's why it's a little challenging. Yeah, I mean, if you've not shot film before, you've got a lot of options. You don't have to spend a lot of money and you can make and integrate film as part of your workflow pretty easily. Um, it doesn't have to be complicated. It only becomes complicated if you make it so. So where can people find more about you? Um, yeah, you can come and check out my website, japancamerahunter.com or Instagram, socials, all that sort of thing. Um, I'll help you find a camera or I'll sell you a camera. I'll give you advice on film, film photography. We've got pretty much everything. So if you need some help, give us a shout. And thanks for having me as well. It's nice been a pleasure. Here. It's been fun. Yeah. Well, I don't know how to... We'll just... Yeah, take care. Peace out. <laughs> Love you from Japan. <laughs>